And there'll be a lot of things going on uh, here, of course, with us so close and how it affected all of us. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those uh, anniversaries each year that really affects people. Tanya J. Powers on the line right now. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. Did you see the, uh, did you see the commercial that the, the Texas mattress store did? Uh, no, I saw the Coke display at uh, Walmart. Okay, uh, what was that too? Because I read that this morning. I didn't. I didn't see what it was, but they said it was the tackiest uh, thing they've ever seen. Um, yeah, I can see where people would would not really appreciate this at all. It was a it was an elaborate display of uh, looked like Coca Cola products. Now I could be wrong. There could be other ones in there. Yeah, but they were the red boxes, and they and they had them in a display where the Coke Zero boxes, I guess, is what it was, because those are the ones that are black. Yeah. Um, they were in the shape of two towers. Oh, boy. And uh, at the top, there was a big banner or something that said, "Never, we will never forget. Yeah. Um, and well, they're getting a lot of heat for that. Well, the mattress uh, commercial is uh, a woman in Texas owns a mattress uh, store, and she had two guys behind her, and it was, come in and uh, you know buy a mattress during our 9-11 mattress sale, of all things. Oh, wow. And then when yeah. she waves her arms out, she hits the two guys behind her, they have two towers of mattresses behind them. The guys fall into the mattresses. The mattresses come down, and she starts screaming. Are you kidding? Oh, me? honest to God. And then says, never forget. Oh, she's getting some massive heat on well, that Well, that one. just makes the Coke display look... <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, it's like, wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I simply can't understand that. So but. it's been 15 years, Tanya. What mm -hmm. has... Um, I mean, is this what's happened, that we become insensitive and it's okay to just, you know, treat it like... Um, uh, We've forgotten about what really happened. It's a joke. It's like a punchline yeah. for some people. I don't, yeah, some people it is. Um, I, I don't think it's that way to most people. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's been desensitized at all. As a matter of fact, I think that's, <laughs> that, that may be uh, the, that may be more insulting to more Americans than they realize. Yeah, I yeah. think that, I think that may be it. Um, there has been a lot that's changed, especially, especially as far as, the way we assess threats now, yeah. um, the fact that uh, you know we did a special on this uh, last weekend for Labor Day. As a matter of fact, uh, you can you can also see it uh, still on our website. Matter of fact, I tweeted the link this morning. If you okay. go to at Tanya J Powers on Twitter, uh, right. the the most recent tweet that I put out. But okay. mm -hmm. uh, it, it we we talked to General Michael Hayden, who was the director of the uh, NSA at the time. We yeah. talked to uh, I talked to Michael Morell, who at on 9-11 was briefing the president. He was with President George W. Bush when all this happened. He was the guy that was in charge of telling him, here's what's going on. Uh, here's, you know, the threat we think. Here's, you know. Yeah. Uh, he went on to be a, the deputy director of the CIA. Uh, we looked at port security, that kind of thing. I mean, that has obviously changed. Uh, Jay Johnson has a job that didn't even exist on 9-11. Um, so there's been a lot that's changed our, you know, communication in, during, in the government. We, we, you know, changed that pretty swiftly, I think, right yeah. after that. Also, the threat assessment, um, it went from, you know, domestic versus foreign to domestic versus anybody. Yeah, it, it, it really did. Um, I, 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 you know, I look at it, it changed the world. It changed our world um, tremendously. If you remember, I mean, just the business uh, if they accomplished anything, uh, is they ceased business operations for for weeks, right? I mean, you and and a lot of companies had difficulties. Uh, revenues went down. Yeah. Um, I mean, it affected us in so many different ways. But just walking through an airport today, it's just uh, it's a it different is. world. That is, it is a different world. You're exactly right. Now, and, you know. I, I know we hear this question, and so many people ask this question, and I get it all the time. And I, I was on the air. Where were you? Um, in were you in the broadcasting world at that time? Oh uh, yeah, I was. Yeah. I was actually a DJ at an oldie station in Memphis, Tennessee, and um, I was getting ready for my midday shift and uh, walked into uh, our living room, and you know, I had a six month old and uh, an almost three year old at the time, mm. and. I remember looking at that, watching it on TV like everybody else did in America, and thinking, wow, this is the, the world my kids are going to grow up in is yeah. so much different than just, the one I grew up in. Yeah, just really changed. And one other question I, I'd be interested, um, you know, the further away it seemed that you, you ended up, uh, that this happened, if you were living in L.A., for instance, um, I, I heard stories of people, especially in the, in the broadcast industry, that said, uh, yeah, it was a big deal, but we didn't react the way you guys reacted in in new york or anything close to that did you find that is uh the further mm, away no no i didn't no I not didn't even either. a little yeah. uh matter of fact the uh 
I remember the, the oldie station that I worked at, we simulcast the news talk station for several days. Right. So our listeners could keep up on things. Yeah. And then when we went back to music programming, it was a lot of America the Beautiful and every yeah. oldies patriotic related thing we could find yeah i uh, i think we all experienced that so yeah all right tanya it's been 15 years and it uh it doesn't go away no tanya j powers fox news thanks so much thank you okay andrew who's on uh, what do you want me to do uh, who's on chief three? it is, chief. is on three yeah hey, let's stay with us because we're talking about 9 11 on uh, on sunday chief um for you this is extremely personal and we had a conversation uh with you yesterday about the aftermath for your health um but beyond that, you were there. I mean, I, I can't, oh. I can't imagine the the, the memories. Uh, they certainly don't go away. It's something that will stay with you forever. No, absolutely, it's not something you forget. It's etched in your mind, and it yeah. will be there forever. So, uh, Chief, I know that you have a tradition, uh, and uh, you do it every year. Um, and uh, are you going to? Is, are you going to? That's the reading of uh, the names of victims. And will you be doing that this weekend? Um, yes, the Utica Fire Department will have a remembrance ceremony, and it will take place at the uh, 9-11 Monument, which is on the Parkway in Sherman. And this beautiful monument it was designed by this uh, Utica woman, in Coop. And basically, uh, it will be a start out, it will be a prayerful uh, remembrance uh, Congressman Hanna will be there, uh, the sheriff will be there, um, and also uh, Brindisi has committed. Okay. Uh, and then we, what we are seeking to do, what we seek to do every year, we get people from the community, and, and they volunteer, and we read the 343 names of the firefighters that perished in those stairways at that tower. And a person will come up and read maybe ten names, and then we ring a a morning bell. Okay. And, and then another person comes up. So this this is a Sunday, and <clears throat> normally it's it's during the week, and people uh, come from their prayer breakfast right over there, and it's very well attended. I, and that you know so sure it will be this Sunday because uh, it's a Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Sunday morning. Yep. But I'm, but I'm hopeful there'll be enough people there to get the names read. So I mean, I'm, it, I, I'm assuming you go with the uh, with the time. It's very time sensitive. Eight forty six, right? Is when yep. when it's the first the time the towers yeah. got struck, and yeah. that's when we you know we start the ceremony. Um, you know, uh, Chief, I want to. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, obviously, you're uh, you're younger than this, but um, <laughs> uh, but I you know I look at the only other time that we've experienced anything like this in this country was was Pearl Harbor. And, mm -hmm. and today we don't, uh, you know, you'll go through a morning and all of a sudden somebody will call you up a veteran oftentimes and say, Hey, I'm not hearing you mention Pearl Harbor day. Um, yeah. because we tend to become desensitized as time goes on. It's been 15 years and I don't feel, uh, that we've become very desensitized at all. See, well, not a hundred percent desensitized, but you know, the years after that, I mean, I would come down the street on this day, this week, and yeah. there would be flags up at every house. There'd be signs in the window, God bless America. And if you can remember right after this, the churches were filled and, yeah. and there yeah. were all kinds of ceremony. We're not at that level. Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate you mentioning this and, and talking about it this week because it, it, it is a reminder. And, you know, this was, it it is it's it's you know on par with Pearl Harbor. Yeah. But also, and I've got to say this as a firefighter, this was one. Uh, this was the most incredible act of courage and bravery. Those firefighters pulling up, and I can still see their faces because I viewed it on television when they got yeah. there live, yeah. and looking up and knowing that this product burning was. It was jet fuel oil impossible to extinguish? They knew the they knew this building was coming down. Yeah, and they went in that stairway, and you know, before they went up that stairway, they went down on one knee, and the fire chaplain blessed them and gave wow. them absolution, and they went up. They knew what the the result was going to be, but they knew they had twenty thousand people to 
<laughs> that about needed that. to yeah. be rescued. Yeah. And, you know, 3,000 were lost, but, I mean, it's just a, an incredible, incredible day. I mean, I view those those uh, New York City firefighters as martyrs. Yeah, you know, yeah. The ones that went in that stairway. And, you know, it was interesting, um, uh, you talk about flags and churches and, and people were, uh, they. Uh, there was a change. Uh, for God's sake, baseball games were canceled. You had uh, yeah. uh, uh, the late shows, the comedy was canceled. Um, people, our lives really changed um, permanently that day. But uh, one thing also happened that, boy, wouldn't it be nice if we could just uh, have it again? And that is that uh, Democrats and Republicans, that label seemed to disappear for a little while. Yeah. And we were just Americans. And if we did more of that, I think we'd be better for it. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. But I will tell you, too, that when there was ceremonies, and there were numerous ceremonies immediately after that, yeah. and you'd announce it, and there would be maybe thousands of people there. Yeah, right. Packed at City Hall, Hannah Park, and... You know, so it has. It, I'm hoping it's still on people's minds, and I hope it. Hoping that the clergy mentions it this Sunday in yeah. their homilies, and uh, you know, and, and we think about it. Well, listen, fly your flag okay. this Sunday. Put a flag out there, right? Uh, I, I have a flag. Oh, so. if you're talking to me. No, I I'm not. Listen, I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not talking to you because I already oh, okay. know. But I'm saying to the general public, to people yep. who are listening right now, um, take that flag out. And if you don't have one, go to the hardware store and pick one up and, yep. and fly Absolutely. it proudly on Sunday. So, All Thank right, you, Chief. Bill. Thank you Thank so you, much. Bill. Thank right. you very much. Bye. Uh, Chief Russ Brooks. And, you know, he disclosed to us uh, on uh, Wednesday of uh, this week that uh, from the debris that uh, he breathed in during 9-11, um, and they completely 100% uh, attached this to 9-11, um, he contracted cancer and has been uh, uh, fighting it uh, successfully, thank God, uh, fighting it since then. Uh, Andrew, quickly, and i got a break. Yeah, really quick. Uh, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I don't want to open the can of worms too, too much, but it's going to be interesting on Sunday because, as we saw last night, this, this trend of football players kneeling during the national anthem yeah, um, will they? Will will, will this, uh, what's his name there, take a break from, from this on, uh, on Sunday? Probably not. No, and I mean, there's going to be days, other players, right? and that's the thing, and other players like him are are, are unfortunately probably going to do the same, and I think yeah. it's going to add another, in my opinion, another level of disrespect. So, uh, Rob says uh, it's big for us because it was just 200 miles from us. Um, I, I have to say that uh, a friend of mine worked out in uh, the Seattle area at the time and reported to, to me and said, you know, I, it was devastating for me. I'm from New York. But um, uh, people didn't stop like they did. They, they just kept going on and doing their business, and it wasn't such a, a big deal for people here. Um, I know Tanya said that wasn't the case uh, in Memphis, but I got to tell you, as you further, I think the further you, you got, the further away you are, the less it really affected you because you, you, you know, people here were just, it was close. It was very, very close. So anyway, Sunday is the anniversary, 15 years.